7,000 years ago, the first really oceanic people came out of China and it came out of Taiwan. A thousand years after that, spreading through the Pacific Islands in Melanesia, even in Indonesia. Then you get to Polynesia, this oceanic country bounded by Hawaii in the north and New Zealand in the southwest and Rapa Nui in the east. 10 million square miles, 600 times more water than this land, biggest country on earth, bigger than Russia. And it was discovered by these extraordinary people. And I say extraordinary because you could argue that they were really the astronauts of our ancestors. They were the greatest explorers on the face of the earth. These extraordinary explorers accomplished these amazing feats without the use of modern instruments, but by relying solely on an innate connection to the winds, waves, and the stars. With the passing of time and the arrival of modern ships and tools, however, the traditional knowledge and practice of celestial navigation and voyaging was nearly lost in Hawaii. But in the 1970s, during a period now referred to as the Hawaiian Renaissance, a group of men formed the Polynesian Voyaging Society to resurrect this ancient wisdom. And then there was a visionary, a painter, an historian, an artist that lights the match of an idea and says, I'm going to build a voyaging canoe. I'm going to sail it back to Kaikinui, the place of my ancestral homeland, 2,400 miles away, the longest ancestral ocean passage ever. My own personal interest was in rebuilding what I saw to be the central object of Polynesian culture. Why central? Because were it not for that object, there would be no Polynesians today, right? So how central can you get? I zeroed in on those features of canoe design, which by their wide distribution throughout Polynesia must have been the most ancient. One night I had been out looking at stars and I had a dream, so I was looking at Arcturus and it suddenly got brighter and I woke up and uh, saw Arcturus, uh, Hokulea. So I wrote down Hokulea. 1975, we launched. I took it around the islands on its maiden voyage. It was a feeling of triumph in getting it into the water. And she looked so beautiful on the water. Uh, it was just as most of us had envisioned. People just came and sat all around and just looked at the canoe. They didn't ask to come aboard. They didn't make a great noise. They just came and sat and looked at the canoe all day long, well into the night. They were communicating with the canoe. The canoe was saying something to them. There was this one guy he kept looking down at me. He put his hand out and said, I think you belong on this boat. Come. And I did. I reached up, I grabbed his hand, he pulled me on the canoe, and I've been on ever since. A great deal was being said that those guys aren't going to get that canoe built. We got it built. And they said, that canoe won't sail. Well, we sailed it. And then they said, well, it won't go to Tahiti. Raindrops, they hamper my vision. Falling down and cutting incision. On May 1st, 1976, Hokulea began her epic voyage, a 2,500-mile journey from Hawaii to Tahiti. Hokulea, Hokulea star of gladness. Star of gladness. After 31 days at sea, Hokulea made landfall in a glorious arrival witnessed by more than 17,000 Tahitians. It was as if Hokulea had breathed life into all of the Polynesian myths and legends about ancient seafaring. The pathway to Tahiti had been reopened and something long dormant began to stir in the hearts and minds of all Polynesians. 
couldn't keep people off. So they just kept on climbing on. And you know, the people on board were like the, the mayor, the governor, and his wife, and all the kids. We couldn't keep the kids off. And everybody's dancing. Back home in Hawaii, there was no doubt that Hokulea had embarked on a voyage of rediscovery in more ways than one. It gave us a kind of hope that the beauty of our culture, the wisdom of our ancestors, could lead us out of this great deficit that we had fallen into. In myself, there was that deep desire to learn navigation to know who I am by knowing where I come from. Just the sheer adventure of being a part of something special like sailing over there. Over the next 30 years, Hokulea traveled throughout the Pacific to Samoa, Tonga, Rarotonga, and Aotearoa. And in 1999, Hokulea sailed to Rapa Nui, the single most isolated landmass on the planet. 25 years of relearning navigation and voyaging reunited the great nation of Polynesia and inspired renewed interest in other cultural practices, language, dance, and traditional arts. As the Hawaiian culture is re-emerging, rediscovering, re-strengthening, that's not a common story around the world. That is a story that is unique. There are cultures and languages that have been lost every single day across this planet. Hokulea's ability to revive and heal is now guiding her next journey that will cover more than 46,000 nautical miles and reach over 80 ports and 26 countries around the world. I mean, the Worldwide Voyage began as an idea. It came from our teachers from the past. It's about bringing community together around common values which you believe in, whether it's culture, whether it's protection of the oceans, whether it's about making sure we have mechanisms that teach leadership to young people. We wouldn't be here today if our ancestors didn't figure out how to live in balance with their environment and with these islands. There is a lesson in going back to traditional practices and finding some way of bridging the gap between what is modern and ancient and making life livable and healthy and safe. Success would be when we see young people that are, that are strong, that are grounded in who they are as native people. And frankly, everybody's native to this earth. And being willing to go and stand up and do what's right for the planet. This is a critical time for us. A lot of people are realizing that because of things that we've done to the planet, to our oceans, the land in the past, that just affects our ability to have oxygen to breathe. And so it's not limited to somebody in Hawaii. It affects everybody that breathes. Along with building better relationships with people around the world who have the same desire to take care of our planet, our island Earth. We're part of a movement. I mean, the journey of the Worldwide Voyage is all about learning in just infinite, extraordinary ways. Every one of us that will be participating go as students, and that when we come home, the journey doesn't end. In some ways, it just begins.